All right, let's move along. Let's go to our next guest. Johnny Hendricks is standing by. Johnny, how are you? Doing great, you? I, I'm doing very well. Uh, I, I want to know right off the top, just physically, uh, it's been a little over a week, uh, a very traumatic event. You had to go to the hospital. We'll get into the details, but physically, how are you feeling after what transpired right before UFC 192? Uh, I'm feeling a lot better. Uh, my body's actually starting to respond um, to everything that I'm doing, um, <clears throat> so I can't complain on that. You know, I, I'm actually able to start running, doing some physical activity without, you know, tiring out or having to sit down for long periods of time. It was weird. Mm. So, so this is the first time we're hearing from you. Can you tell us from you know, your perspective, your words, what exactly happened before 192? <clears throat> well, everything was doing good. Um, <clears throat> you know, I was drinking, like, it was weird. Like, uh, let's say I was drinking two and a half gallons a day. Um, I was walking around, riding around 193, which is normal. <laughs> and then, uh, my body just quit. I quit going to the bathroom, quit is sort of like my body was holding on to everything, which is sort of weird. Um, and then, uh, we started doing the weight cut, which I was, you know, I was still drinking two and a half gallons a day. And then all of a sudden I just hit a plateau, um, <clears throat> where, I would feel like I'm just, you know, you're getting lightheaded, which is common, you know, whenever you cut weight, which is common. So, uh, I wouldn't think anything of it. Um, and then all of a sudden I woke up on Thursday feeling good, it, like feeling really good. I was like, you know, 184. I was like, this is going to be perfect. Lose 10 pounds, wake up on Friday and have to lose an extra three. That's going to work out great. Uh, went and sort of <clears throat> went to did my first session. And, uh, in an hour, I only lost like two pounds. I was like, uh, oh boy. You know, and then that's whenever my body sort of <clears throat> started feeling different. And then uh, I tried to push through it, went and did another, another session, uh, trying to work out. And that's whenever I was like, okay, something's definitely wrong. Uh, and didn't know what it was. I just knew something was wrong. Both both of uh, my left and right side started to hurt at that point, and went to the hospital. And that's when I found out that my intestines were dried up, and I had a kidney stone in my on my right side. And right then and there, were you told you will not be able to fight? <clears throat> Pretty much, yes. Um, they said that you know you can you might be able to continue, uh, but said most likely you're not going to be able to lose any more weight. Mm. How much did you weigh at that point? I weighed 180. Okay. Uh, That's what was weird is that, and and, you know, this is what's even more weird than anything is that even my bad weight cut, like right around 173, that's where my body would, if, if that's where I really had to push, you know, from 173 to 170, you know, definitely for the title fight. Yeah. Uh, that's where I had to push. So I was like, <clears throat> so being that heavy, like something being wrong and my body just sort of wouldn't sweat. Uh, I was like, okay, something physically is wrong with my body. Uh, and so that's whenever I went to the hospital and that's whenever they said, you're, you're depleted. Uh, you know, the, <clears throat> the way that, you know, of course they can't speculate, but you know, I might've been able to lose an extra pound or two you know, but how bad does that hurt my body? You know I mean, uh, I'm, there's a part of that's sort of grateful that I didn't yeah. continue because it took me a week, you know, <clears throat> it's taken me a week to get over what happened. By the and, way, and did so, you pass the kidney stone? No, I have not passed that yet. I've oh. been drinking two gallons of water a day. I don't, uh, we have a doctor's appointment on the 18th or 19th to go either get it dealt with or to have them help me push it. Are you in a lot? I've, I've had a kidney stone, so I, I definitely feel for you, my friend. Uh, I'm just wondering if you're in a lot of pain um, because it was incredibly painful for me, but you're a much stronger man and tougher man than I am. Well, you know what it is, is that it just feels like somebody's just poking you with a knife in yeah. the right side. Right. You know, um, <clears throat> I get used to you know, I've been through so many training camps where, you know, you've broken hands, broken noses or whatever it might be, you know, um, 
where you sort of just deal with the pain and you try to avoid hitting that spot, if that makes sense. So, like, I've been sleeping a lot on my left side, you know, trying to do everything I can to sort of stay off, keep the pressure off that side so it doesn't feel, you don't feel the pain as bad. What was your reaction when you, you, you had to come to terms with the fact that you weren't going to fight in this big fight in, in your home state now where, you know, there was a lot of buildup, a lot of, you know, buzz for this fight, a potential title shot on the line? Like, how, how did you deal with all of that? You know, um, you, you, whenever you're sitting there and you're, you're in that situation, at first I'm sitting here thinking, my health. If that makes sense, you know, my body, my body was hurting, uh, to a point where, you know, like I said, I've, I've heard of many fights and I've always pushed through it, but that one was different. You know, um, you're sitting here going, okay. Yeah. A lot of this built up <clears throat> and you know, what, what people don't understand too, is that I just threw away three months of training. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, that's what sucks more than anything because the light at the end of the tunnel is my fight. That's what I enjoy. That's what I want to do. You know, uh, some people, you know, they might not like the the end result, but that's my that's my pleasure. That's that's what that's what gets me through the weight cut and the three months of training is that right there. So <laughs> that sucks. But I also know that you have to take a step back and sit here and say, okay, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm, how is my body going to handle it? Because, you know, let's say something ha- or something crazy, I lose that weight, I make it. One body shot yeah. doesn't bring me down. Yeah, uh, and now you're sitting here going, okay, well, I, now a body shot brings me down. Then people are going to say, well, okay, Johnny's body's weak, for one. Two, uh, now instead of, you know, instead of being two fights away, like right now I might be two fights away or one fight away still. You know, I might have to do three fights to get back to where I want to be. Uh, you know, and, and, and those are all the things that are going through your head whenever you're in that situation. And, you know, you want to fight. And, yeah, I want to fight in front of my fans in front of Texas and, and do all those things. That's what sucks more than anything is that you work so hard to showcase what you have. And all of a sudden, you know, the diet that we were on backfires, um, which sucks. But <clears throat> I've learned, <laughs> you know, after this, we did a lot of research. And I was eating a lot of deer meat, a lot of high protein, animal protein, which... That's a leading cause of kidney stones and your intestines filling. I uh, did had no idea because I usually eat a lot of fish and a lot of uh, chicken. Mm. So I was like, you know, I I wanted to eat more protein, a lot of cleaner protein, and we so we focused more on that, and it ended up backfiring. And I think that if I would have eaten more chicken and salmon, I wouldn't have been in this situation. Um. Last week on this show, your former nutritionist, Mike Dolce, said that there was a comedy of errors based on what he was told leading up to your weight cut, the final days. Is that a fair way to assess this particular weight cut? No. Um, I, I, you, know what, you know what it was? I think, I think it, what it was is uh, there's a lot of signs that were telling me that I needed to change up my diet, okay? And it wasn't my weight. <clears throat> my weight, like I said, I hit 189 three weeks out of the fight. That's the first time, you know, and I have proof, you know, one of my coaches was sitting there because they were all worried. They're like, oh, we don't know where your weight's at. They're sort of giving me my space. I was like, hey, let's hit 189 then. I can do that. I was walking in at 193, hit 189, <clears throat> and then that's whenever everything sort of started to fall apart. Mm. Uh I play tennis. I know that sounds weird, but <laughs> I play tennis. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, and even my coach, he was like, we, uh, you know, we didn't think anything of it at the point at the time. But uh, now looking back, 
I understand because I play. I, I go. He coached me Monday and Thursdays, and every Monday and Thursday, I would only be able to do like a ten or twenty minute workout with him. And then I have to take a break. Mm. Uh, you know, and, and <clears throat> you know, after doing research, I find out that the my the way I did my the high protein <clears throat> was absorbing all my water, so therefore. It was it was hurting me in a, in the long run, which again, you know, you're drinking a lot of water, but your muscles hold on to it instead of letting it go because your body is. It, it, I, I don't I don't know the scientific terms of it, but it, it it hurts you in the long run. The amount of venom spewed your way in 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 the you know 24 hour stretch between this news coming out and 192 was pretty intense. Do you read any of that stuff? Does it make it worse, or do you ignore it? No, you know I don't read it because you know here's the thing. I know I hey, I know there's going to be venom spit my way. Yeah, you know here's the thing. People don't understand, and you know again, people don't understand is that you know they just they don't get to watch one fight, right? Well, I don't get paid, okay? And I also did like I said, I had to give up three months of training camp that I worked very hard and I was very prepared to fight Woodley. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and then, then the next fight, let's say in probably March, September, March, April, I would be fighting for the title. You know, these people that are spitting venom, <clears throat> they don't, they don't look at that. You know, they only look at what's in front of them at that moment. Mm. Yeah, uh, you know, and and what I say to them is, come and try to lose twenty pounds. Don't you know? I I have to lose thirty pounds each training camp. Okay, <clears throat> I say come with me and let's lose twenty, and I'll give you a week to lose twenty. And how many people can actually say that they've lost twenty pounds in one week? Now, I, and I do know that this is my job, and that's what mm. makes me different than everything else, uh, different than everybody else, should I say? But I also know that, <clears throat> you know, whenever I tried it, I, I, I tried to use a diet, you know, somebody, a dietitianist or a nutritionist, whatever it might be. Um, and I learned a lot of great things. And whenever I did it for the Matt Brown fight, I made 170. That was the easiest weight cut I, I have ever had. Yeah. It, it, considering you make 170, it always sucks. But that was the easiest one I've ever had. So I was like, okay, let's build off of that. You know, I'm always about building. I don't like staying the same, which on the diet aspect, I should have stayed the same. I should have changed a couple other things. But on the diet, you know, eating eggs in the morning, I still did that. I should have done chicken, salmon. And what I've learned is now, instead of eating venison maybe twice or three times a day, Cut it down to once every three days. You know, try to stay away from the animal protein of venison because it, it's so it's so high in protein. Uh, you know, and that's what that's you know, it, it, it's a learning curve. It sucks that I had to learn this way. You know, I wish I, I still had uh, a nutritionist, but uh, you know, it, it's just one of those things that sometimes you got to learn the hard way. And, and you know, like I said. Going from the Matt Brown fight to this one, I was like, dude, this is going to be awesome. Another easy weight cut. I was getting my weight down the way I wanted to. Um, I felt strong. I felt big. Um, I was drinking plenty of fluids. I was like, this is going to be cakewalk. And in return, the time that I'm the, the, the time that I'm the most confident is whenever it goes the worst. So after the fight, Dana White said that he now considers you a middleweight. What's your response to that? <clears throat> you, know, and, you know, hey, there's a part of me that likes that because I wouldn't have to make 170 again, right? But, <laughs> uh, you know, for me as a, as, a, as a competitor, that's a lot harder road, right? And one day I would like to venture out on that road. But at, at at this time, I, I still want to consider myself a welterweight, or uh, uh, yeah, welterweight, a one hundred seventy pounder, because <clears throat> there's so much more I can do. There's so much better I can be. 
Um, and that's what I really want to focus on right now. Uh, sort of lay off the weight, lay off of everything, just sort of get my body back to where it was sort of for the Matt Brown fight, where it's an easy walk around. You know, right now I'm walking around. I've been waking up at 197. I'm going to stay right around there, maybe a little bit lower uh, in the next week. Now that I can actually start running and doing some exercise, that's what I'm going to start focusing on and trying to get back to where I'm right around 195. Uh, that's where I was, 197, 195 to 198, where I was for the Matt Brown fight. Um, and that's sort of what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a mini weight cut here at the end of this month, uh, hit 180. And if I hit 180 and, and everything's doing great, then that's whenever, you know, I talked to Dan and Lorenzo, uh, and that's when I'm going to call and say, hey, let's go to fight because I, I want to get back in there. I want to train. I want to fight. And I just want to make sure that it's going to be healthy on my body. And if, and if I, let's say I hit 180 and I go through the same thing, well, then I understand, okay, now, it, now i got to sit here and go, okay, is my body sort of tired of making 170? Uh, that I don't know just yet until I do this mini weight cut and see how my body reacts. And hopefully it reacts good because then I can continue my welterweight sort of run. Have you, have you talked to those guys, Dane and Lorenzo in particular? Because, you know, they said this recently about Kelvin Gaslam and John Lineker, and they had to fight a weight class up. Do you know if they're even going to entertain the idea of you fighting at 170 in the near future? I, I have talked to them. I have talked to them. Um, and, and, you know, it, it, like I told you, it, a lot of it depends on this mini weight cut Okay. at the end of this. So they're um, allowing you to I, do that. They're okay with that plan. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I talked to them. I don't know if they're 100% keen on it. Okay. You know, I know they'd like me to fight, in which I would like to fight too. But I want to make sure that I make the smartest decision in this moment, uh, if that makes sense. You know, I, I believe that, yeah, like I said, I think... I could do good at 185 uh, pounds, but what am I going to do better at? What am I going to be better at? Guys, I'm only giving up like two to three inches. And in some cases, you might be giving up six or giving up six inches every fight hmm. of reach. You know, um, and that's the thing is that's all I want to make sure that I, I at, at this point, you know, yeah, I've had, I've, I've struggled but I've also made it easy, and that's the, that's the downfall, is that I made it so easy for the Matt Brown fight. Uh, and going off that, that's exactly how I'm going to start running my camps, is, is exactly how I did that fight. You know, uh, the, the way I did the chicken and the salmon and alternated with them and all this other stuff, there's a lot of things I tried to improve on this weight cut, and it failed. Last question, and it's a two-parter. Appreciate the time and, and candor greatly. Are you interested in reconnecting with a Mike Dolce? And if not him, maybe someone like a George Lockhart, who Daniel Cormier was uh, was glowing about, you know, after and before his fight. And if you do fight at 170 next and all goes well, do you want the Woodley fight to to finally put that one to bed? Uh, you know what? Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind. Uh, doing the Woodley fight. I okay. think I was ready for this fight. Uh, and I, I needed, uh, that's what, that, and again, that's what sucks is that I, I thought that this was going to be a good fight for me and I was going to be able to move forward from this. Instead, now it's hindering me. And, and you know, it's one of those things that, um, and, and another dietitian, yeah, you know, if, if, we ha if we could rekindle, hey, that'd be fine. You know, it's just one of those things that, now, like I said, now knowing what I know, it's only going to make my life easier and whoever I bring in with me. But you're open uh, to that. That makes sense. You're opening to bringing uh, someone? Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm always, you know, here's the thing. I'm always open for it because uh, I don't know everything, obviously. <laughs> you know, I thought I, I thought I improved on that, um, but I failed. And it's because of my miscalculations. But... I want to get back to being the best where I don't have to, you know, I don't like worrying about the weight cut. And when you do it yourself, like I said, this one I wasn't worried about. And it, and it backfired huge mm. on me. Um, I want to get back to where I don't have to worry about it. 
You know, and if that's if you know that's where staying at one ninety five, eating cleaner, you know, ninety five percent of the time, all the time, then that's what I'm willing to sacrifice to do what I need to do. Again, Johnny, thank you so much for the time. Really appreciate it. Uh, happy to hear that you are feeling better. Good luck with that kidney stone. I, I know how tricky it can be. I, I'm sure it will pass quite easily. And, uh, of course, looking forward to, to seeing you back in there sooner rather than later. was really looking forward to that fight, as was everyone. So just happy to hear that you're healthy and okay and hope everything works out from here on out. Well, thank you so much, and you have a wonderful day, okay? Same to you. There he is, Johnny Hendricks, the former UFC welterweight champion. Wish him the best. And uh, owning up to his mistakes, we'll see where he goes from here.